Okay, so accurate woodworking with pretty minimal kit. Uh, I had the idea for this video when I was doing the deck parts on Rocket um, over at the shipping container and had pretty minimal stuff available up there, so had to make do basically. You might have also seen my workshop tour video, so you'll have seen that I've got a fairly nice setup of machines and things now, but that wasn't always the case. I first started out building boats in my mum's back garden or on the driveway. Now I thought I'd share a few tips that I thought might help people doing the same thing if you've got basic stuff, um, how to get by and do some pretty accurate work. Uh, to try and avoid too much criticism, I probably stress that this is really aimed at people that are wanting to do that. It's not just general woodworking, it's really sort of pitched towards people that want to build a boat at home and may have no tools at all, uh, not much woodworking experience. So uh, here's my first tip. So the first thing really would be tools. Uh, if I had to recommend one tool, it would be to get yourself a belt sander. Um, doesn't have to be a particularly expensive one. Uh, you can get a pretty cheap one or something like this, a Makita, which is a bit nicer. They all do basically the same thing and um, that's really gonna help you out. Also a jigsaw. Um, with a jigsaw and a belt sander you can quite accurately make pretty much every part that you need on a boat. So um, as a bare minimum those would be my, my two choices really. So I'll set this up and show you just some basic shaping of parts. Okay so I very crudely rigged up the belt sander. As you can see it's clamped down to the bench so it's really nice and secure. It's not going to go anywhere. Obviously the number one thing is be careful and don't have this flying all across the workshop but if you got to do it with basic stuff you got to do it sometimes so it's well fixed down um, the belt isn't rubbing on the on the bench it's slightly up above there and I've made this little base plate just out of some off cuts and uh, fixed it in the vise so just rigged up a little sanding station um, a little bit like you'd have with with my bigger fixed sander uh, so that's what the bigger fixed sander is like um, so you know just basically recreated a small bench top version of that with a little handheld belt sander so this can be used for shaping most of your parts you've got the flat surface on the base of the belt sander and the radius at the nose as well so uh, I'll show you just how you can clean up some pretty rough cut parts or rounded pieces just using that simple little setup I'm just going to sketch out a basic part similar to what I was making on the deck boards for Rocket. Using my trusty mug as a radius. So cutting a piece like this, you know, that might have to be quite accurate and fit inside another radius um, where you're really going to see the difference. Um, and this is a good way to make sure that that's just spot on. So I'll just rough cut that with a jigsaw. Um, and then show you shaping it. Um, my other tip really is to always work to a line so for as long as you've got a line there you know where you are with this piece of wood the second that you sand or cut over that line you lose all reference of where you are what size your part is so if you're going to rough cut that with a jigsaw always cut on the outside of that line um, and the same with sanding so I'm going to sand this now and I can just really slowly work down to that line um, and I know exactly where I am with the part. I know I'm not going to go too far. Okay, so you can see I was able to work quite accurately up to that line. Um, just taking off tiny amounts of material on one side of the curve or the other, and that gives you a perfectly shaped part um, to quite a high degree of accuracy. Certainly for home boat building, that's plenty accurate enough for making frames or deck parts, whatever it is you might be doing. So you might take that over to the boat and decide that it needs to be a slightly different shape or it needs a bit more material off. Um, what I would suggest in that instance is to draw the line again 
as I said, once you've sanded that line away, you lose all of your shape and you don't know where you're going to be. So, say you need to just take 5mm off of that, or a little bit of the top, I would say draw the line again. So if you scribe the line back around, you've got a reference then in comparison to your original line. So once you go over that, you know where you're going to be. So now you've got that second line that you can work down to, you can come over the first one and perhaps you might only need to shape the top half so you can kind of feather in between the two. So maybe even draw another line in between those two and you can kind of work in a stepped format down from one to the next. So there you can see I've slightly reshaped the curve. I come down to the furthest line on this side, kind of gone up through the intermediate line there, and then we've still got the original one on the outside. So for as long as you keep those lines there, you know where you're at with it, and you won't go too far. Because once you take too much off, you can't add it back on. The same principle can apply to a straight edge. So that might be a scarf or a butt joint or a mitre, anything like that where two parts meet. Uh, this is a kind of exaggerated, roughly cut joint. Um, you know, you might have a jigsaw that doesn't cut very well, or a mitre saw that doesn't cut very well, or you might just be doing this by hand with a little tenon saw. Um, as long as you cut outside of that line and always work down to the line, you can still get a really accurate joint. So uh, I'll show you how I clean that up. Okay, so you can see the parts after shaping there. They're not perfect, but the joint's a lot better than it would be just cut roughly by hand or with a jigsaw or with a saw that's not performing very well. Uh, you can see that I've still left the pencil line there, so as I say, I would always recommend leaving a pencil line visible so that you've got a reference of where you're at and you don't go too far, even if it means you need to redraw that line. Uh, you can see there, look, pencil just along the edge and then you can just rub that off or sand that off further down the line. Okay, so that's my tips on how to do fairly accurate woodwork with the most basic kit. Get yourself a belt sander and always work to a pencil line. Hope you found that useful and um, remember to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see what else I've been doing. Cheers guys. <laughs>